Hi guys, are you looking to study postgraduate qualification outside India in countries like USA, Australia, New Zealand, Canada and UK? As we all know that these countries are very popular among Indian students going for the master's program and MBA programs. And I have seen that many Indian students, they come up with the query whether they should go for MBA or a master's program. So today we are going to answer that question. Okay guys, so let's, let's understand whether, uh, what is the difference between MBA and master's program. And uh, let's take a scenario if you have completed your undergraduate degree in India. So you are actually eligible to apply for master's courses in these subjects like accounting, finance, healthcare, arts, commerce. And you are also eligible for a direct admission in MBA uh, if you appear for an entrance exam like CAT, ZAT and MAT. Uh, however, the scenario outside India is very contrary and very different. Uh, so if you are applying for an MBA program outside India, then you need to know that there are certain requirements which you need to meet. For example, to apply for an MBA program in any English speaking countries or even in the Europe, uh, you need to have minimum three to four years of work experience, inclusive of one year of leadership experience. You need to have a very diversified profile you need to appear for an entrance exam like GMAT. You need to appear for an English language ability test, which is ILTS or TOEFL. You need to also talk about your uh, entrepreneurship experience. If you have led any team, if you have been a mentor. So these are the traits of an applicant when you apply for an MBA program. And in case if you apply for a master's program, you are eligible to apply for master's program right after your undergraduate degree outside India. Now, there is another difference, the major difference between MBA and master is, so generally, uh, you know, an applicant go for an MBA program when they want to improve and develop their managerial skills, when they want to shift their industry. However, you do your master's program when you want to improve your subjective skills. So for example, if you have done BBA or BCom in India of three years of undergraduate degree, uh, and if you're confused whether I should go for master's program or MBA program, then my suggestion would be to look for the master's courses. Since you do not have any work experience and you are a fresher uh, you know, student, you are a fresh graduate. So you could go for the courses, for example, uh, master's in finance, master's in accounting, master's in business analysis, master's in marketing, international business, international marketing. So these are the courses that are available. And uh, while doing master's program in the subject discipline, it will give you a good career start. So if you complete your master's outside India, you could actually get a you know, hike on your salary package, you know, double what you can get in India. So in India, I think an average salary of a student who does master's program could be around 30,000, 40,000 rupees per month. And let's say if you go to countries like Canada or UK or USA, after doing your master's program, your package could, you know, swap between 50,000 to 70,000 dollars or pounds per year and opposite to that if you are if you have work experience let's say if you have done bachelor's degree in India and after that you have worked in any multinational company in a corporate sector and you uh, you know you have like three to four years of experience then my suggestion is to go for MBA program and even with the MBA program you can get a salary package hike on a very great level. So guys, just to uh, compare the entry requirements of MBA and uh, Masters. So you, you, uh, you need to know that if you are applying for MBA program in any overseas country, so the general requirements are you need to appear for GMAT examination. You need to also give uh, English language ability test, whether it is uh, ILTS, TOEFL or PTE. Uh, you need to also have three to four years of work experience, which we just discussed a while back and uh, you need to also uh, have done some online courses some profile building and some diversified for, uh, profile yeah and uh, if you're going for the master's program uh, you don't need any gmat exam uh, you don't need any work experience you just need to appear for ilts uh, but having any internship or having any part-time experience will definitely count but not a part of the application so based on that you can decide so generally I have seen many students ask about uh, MBA and uh, master's cost in the North American region which is for Canada and USA. So we can understand by saying that if you are going for an MBA program in Canada or USA, your yearly tuition fees could fall between 15 to 20 lakhs in Indian rupees per year. 
and if you are going for a master's course your uh, fees could fall between 10 to 15 lakhs per year so generally MBA is an expensive program uh, than the master's course okay and in case if you are looking to study MBA program in Australia then you might spend around uh, 20 to 25 lakhs Indian rupees per year on your MBA program and MBA programs are for two years in Australia if you go for master's program which is also for two years in Australia which uh, and it, the fees will be between 12 to 15 16 lakhs per year if you're going for MBA program and master's program in European region which also includes UK France Ireland uh, your MBA course fees will be bit around 20 lakhs per year and for masters it will be around 15 lakhs per year so let's say if you have an educational gap uh, many students think that if they have a gap of five years ten years they cannot get admissions they cannot they, their visa could be refused uh, but I have personally worked with many mature candidates in the past uh, having an age of 40 plus and 35 plus and they have successfully achieved their admission for masters and even for MBA in different overseas countries uh, my suggestion here is that you should not have an idle gap so you need to understand there are two types of gap one is an idle gap which means that after your education you are not doing anything you are just sitting at home and you don't have any evidence to prove your work experience or any activity you are engaged in but if you have an educational gap but you have been working alongside it could be you are running your own business maybe you are supporting your father in his business maybe you are having a work experience working with any private organization but if you have the evidences like offer letters appointment letters if you're getting salary credits so you can showcase that you're not sitting idle and you can still apply okay guys so uh, if you have any more questions and if you want to get your profile evaluated uh, we can uh, help you with the uh, you know free evaluation on your profile and suggest you that which country which course selection and which uh, you know program is more suitable based on your needs so please log into our website www.gotouniversity.com and you can also email us you can also call us you can whatsapp us and our counselors can get in touch with you to help you for free